Hello, welcome to the London Borough of Barnet's uh, poll clerk briefing for the GLA elections that will be taking place on Thursday 6th of May. Uh, my name is John Bailey, I'm the Head of Electoral Services here at the London Borough of Barnet uh, and I'm just going to run through some slides that will hopefully uh, be of assistance before you spend your day on the 6th of May as a poll clerk in one of our polling stations. Um, so, as you've already seen, the Greater London Authority have instructed that all polling staff complete an online training course. Um, the link is on the page, but we'll have sent this to you already. Uh, and staff are required to complete all the modules and the online assessment. <clears throat> in addition to that, in Barnet, we need to uh, cover some specific things uh, about that we need in Barnet, the arrangements uh, that we have in our polling stations. Um, but also the GLA training doesn't cover any of the COVID-19 control measures, which of course are so critical at this time. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to watch another presentation. What I'm going to cover in this briefing um, is uh, the elections during a COVID-19 pandemic, what we're doing to make sure that polling venues are as safe as possible, which will include the risk assessment controls, all of the extra equipment that will be given to you in the polling stations of signage to PPE and so on, and a quick uh, briefing around the layout of polling venues, what will be required. There are some other things that are different about the May 2021 elections. It is, of course, the GLA elections, and it means that there are more ballot papers um, and different voting methods. So I'll run through those briefly, and I'll give you a quick countdown to polling day, some of the things that we ask our staff to do in Barnet um, visiting the polling station, how you set it up, the sort of paperwork that gets done in the polling station uh, and of course what happens at the close of poll and how you need to manage queues throughout the day because we are expecting queues for this election, not necessarily because it's going to be particularly busy but we're going to limit the number of people in polling stations. So delivering an election during the pandemic, uh, the government has of course issued guidance around why these elections are going ahead uh, you can find this on the government's website. Um, the big priority, of course, will be to minimise the transmission of COVID-19 and to protect public health. It's a key priority, which is quite unusual for an election day. Um, the measures that are being put in place to ensure that polls will be COVID secure for all involved, um, the government has issued guidance on what those measures need to be. And of course, we will be implementing them in our polling stations here in Barnet. Um, and it's important to note that the vaccination programme, the plans for that programme and of course how successful it's been rolled out uh, so far have been a key impact on the decision of the government to proceed with these elections at this time. Um, and not to forget that voters do have three different ways in which they can vote at these elections. They can of course vote in person at one of our COVID secure polling stations. Uh, they had the opportunity to request a postal vote and Barnet was very active in encouraging our electors to choose this method so that it would minimise the number of people that had to go to a polling station. We have got a record number of postal voters in Barnet for these elections. Uh, we're at 59,000 postal voters in Barnet. Um, and finally, of course, electors can still appoint a proxy to vote on their behalf um, for these elections. And the government has made some changes to the legislation around emergency proxies. Um, so specifically, if people have uh, COVID symptoms, are unwell or need to self-isolate, uh, they've got some additional ways in which they can get an emergency proxy. They've made it slightly simpler um, in that last week leading up to polling day. The general health principles, of course, are, are very well known. You'll have seen these publicised um, uh, across street boards and outside of shops and so on. Uh, on the telly, we see in adverts that include this information. Uh, the, the, the motto at the moment is hands, face, space and fresh air. People should clean their hands regularly. They're required to wear a face covering when they're in indoor venues um, and that will include polling stations, of course. Uh, uh, everybody's advised to maintain social distance so far as is possible. And the thing that's been probably most recently added uh, to this is the requirement uh, for people to maximise the amount of fresh air that is available. Um, and it's something we'll discuss in terms of ventilation in polling stations. Um, so all of our polling stations will have a number of risk management measures in place. Um, we followed all of the guidance that's been issued from the government, the health and safety executive, the electoral commission, 
uh, and other organisations. We've worked with our colleagues here in Barnet in the health and safety team and from Public Health England. All, the, all of our venues will have to have uh, social distancing in place. And so uh, we've had to put in a capacity, a maximum number of people that can be inside the polling station um, across all of our polling stations. Uh, so this is dependent upon the size. We've been out to visit all of them. We've measured them all up um, and we've used a, a fairly simple calculation to work out the capacity uh, of each polling station. And don't forget that the polling station is the room or hall that you are based in uh, to, for electors. It's not necessarily the entire building that, that you are in. The, the capacity that we are advising to all presiding officers uh, is the capacity for the polling station itself. It's a requirement, it's in the COVID regulations that everyone should wear a polling station, uh, should wear a mask when they're in the polling station. Uh, there are, of course, some people that are legally exempt from having to wear a face mask and we won't expect our polling station staff to try and police this. Um, but if somebody does come in that isn't wearing a face mask, we'll have an arrangement in place so that we can get those people through the polling station as quickly as possible without making any greater risk to other people in the polling station. Hand sanitizer uh, will be advised for everybody, of course, before they enter the station. We'll have hand sanitizer available at the entrance and where uh, polling stations have an exit, we'll put a, a hand sanitizer there as well. And one of the other things that we've done for this election that's never happened before is we've advised all electors to bring their own pencil or pen. Um, although, of course, we will have pencils available in the polling stations if they haven't brought one along. Um, as poll clerks, one of the additional duties uh, that you'll have for this election uh, that isn't particularly uh, normal um, is to help keep the, the polling station as clean as possible. Um, so we'll be providing lots of materials to make sure that things can be wiped down quickly and efficiently uh, throughout the day to make sure that the touch points um, and any places that you're in contact with are kept clean and sanitised. Um, and finally, of course, we're going to introduce now screens and visors for polling station staff, um, and I'll cover how these are going to be used in the polling station in a moment. Uh, so the key elements of the risk assessment and the risk management that we have um, starts with the protecting against the spread of COVID via airborne droplets. Our colleagues in uh, health and safety and, and public health have made it quite clear that the vast majority uh, of the transmissions of, of COVID happen through uh, airborne droplets. So this is the key element that, that we need to guard against. Um, as is typical now, and, and everyone will have experienced, the key uh, um, measure of safeguard against this is to have social distancing. Um, so there will be a limit on the number of people allowed into your polling station, uh, which will be specific to your polling station. We will have a managed route through your polling station. So where possible, we'll be look, asking presiding officers to work with the staff that they've got to devise a one way system and where possible, if your polling station has it, to have a separate entry and exit point. Um, a key now is obviously to increase the ventilation within the polling station to make it as effective as possible. We want as much fresh air coming into and out of the polling station uh, as possible. Um, and for most of our polling venues, this is going to be about keeping doors and windows open. Um, of course, we do have to be mindful that people do need to vote in private. Um, so we need to make sure that they have the confidence to vote uh, and feel that they're not being seen uh, from anywhere else. And of course, we don't know quite what the weather is going to be on polling day, um, and that may have uh, an impact on quite how many doors and windows can be kept open. It is, of course, mandatory, as I mentioned already, to wear a face covering. And of course, these should be covering both nose and mouth. Um, and as I mentioned now, polling staff that are working at desks, so those people that are working on the register or filling in the CNL and actually issuing the ballot papers, will be posi uh, positioned behind Perspex screens. And we are providing screens into all of our polling stations so that these can be placed on the desks so that those staff who are not moving around are protected by a Perspex screen. So very much like you'll have seen in shops and any other reception areas for buildings that you may have had to visit. Um, and polling staff that are mobile, uh, we are providing extra staff. And so we will be asking them to look after the queuing outside if that's happening. Uh, to be helping out with wiping down the polling booths and so on, um, as well as providing face masks, we'll also be providing a visor 
uh, for every member of staff so that if they're not seated at a desk, they can wear a visor when they're away from the desk. Um, <clears throat> the next part of the uh, protections that we need to worry about are, of course, about contact with infected surfaces. Uh, so this is a much smaller uh, risk of transmission, but it is something that we can do quite a lot to mitigate against. Uh, as I said earlier, we will ask everybody entering the polling station to sanitise their hands. Uh, staff within the polling station will be asked to regularly sanitise their hands and everybody will be given their own small bottle of hand sanitizer to keep on them uh, by themselves or with themselves so they can do this regularly throughout the day. Um, we have asked all electors to bring their own pen or pencil, and this is even included on the poll card that we've sent to them. Um, we will have clean pencils available, so we won't have the pencils on string in the polling booth like is, mo is most usual at polling station. We'll be asking them to take a clean pencil from a box. Um, and we will advise don't take poll cards from electors. Of course, they might end up dropping them or leaving them behind. Uh, but if they offer you their poll card, you shouldn't take it from them. Just ask them to take the poll card away with them. Uh, those polling staff that are working at a desk, because um, your presiding officer will probably have a bit of a rotor and you'll be changing positions throughout the day. Um, what we're advising is that you wipe down the area. There'll be plenty of sprays and uh, antibacterial antiviral wipes that you can use in the polling station. So make sure you give it a wipe down before you move into the desk area. And again, if you're moving on to do something else in the polling station. And of course, the polling booths and any door handles and any other places that you see that people are touching throughout the day should just regularly be wiped down with the spray and the clean paper towel that we're providing to make sure they stay uh, and remain clean. Um, of course, if there are any other areas, uh, you, you just need to keep your eyes out because uh, doors will probably be open, but it's quite possible that you'll notice that there are places where people lean uh, put their hands up whilst they're waiting and so on. Uh, and of course, periodically, it would be sensible to wipe those down as well. Uh, to enable all of this, of course, we're providing lots of additional equipment. Um, all polling stations will get, get this. Uh, there'll be hundreds of face masks uh, provided so that they can be changed regu regularly throughout the day. Uh, staff are more than welcome to bring along their own face masks, of course. Um, but it is a long day in a polling station, so it is advisable that they do change regularly throughout the day. Um, it, it's not particularly healthy to have a, a face mask on for many hours without changing it. Um, as I've mentioned already, perspex screens will be in place for those staff that are seated uh, whilst they're doing their role, and visors will be available for staff that are moving around the polling station. They do need to be worn as well as a face mask. The face mask, it doesn't replace the face mask. Um, I've mentioned the small bottles of sanitizer for members of staff. There'll be large bottles of hand sanitizer with hand pumps on the top for your electors to use on their way in. Um, there'll be lots of spray cleaner, lots of blue paper towel. All of this will be available so that you can wipe down your polling booths um, and any other touch points throughout the polling station regularly throughout the day. We're also given an extra bin liner for this election. Usually we just give you a black bin liner for food rubbish and that kind of thing. And then a clear bin liner that is used for paper um, or poll cards that people leave behind, that kind of thing. In addition, this time we'll be giving you an orange bin liner, which is just to be used for all of the cleaning materials that you use throughout the day um, so that they don't contaminate the other uh, waste bags. Um, this isn't clinical waste. We have been advised we, we shouldn't refer to the waste that we have in uh, polling stations as clinical waste. Um, there are very stringent controls that need to be in place for clinical waste and, and this doesn't fall within that category. Um, that's why it's an orange bin liner and not a yellow bin liner, which clinical waste is, is always disposed of. Um, we will provide plastic gloves, um, but just to be mindful that this, this isn't considered part of the PPE uh, as regards COVID, um, the use of gloves doesn't protect against transmitting COVID uh, because people will still touch various surfaces and so forth. Um, but the gloves are there in case anybody wants to wear them whilst they're using any of the cleaning sprays uh, and so forth. Um, so you don't necessarily need to use them unless you, you would like to whilst you're wiping things down. Uh, I mentioned already we won't have the little pencils on strings. Uh, there will be boxes of pencils available with uh, 150 pencils in each, I believe, uh, and an additional tray so that if the uh, electors manage to get all the way through that box during the day, these could be wiped down so that they can be used by uh, another elector later in the day. 
And of course, we'll have lots of the antibacterial wipes that come along. And so these are the sort of thing you can use if you quickly want to wipe down an area, uh, whether there's a spillage or someone's touched something that nobody else has touched throughout the day, etc. On top of all that equipment, there's a, a lot of additional signage that we're providing for these elections. Um, this will include signs to remind people that they shouldn't come into the venue if they have any COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, there's extra entrance and exit signs. There are signs to mark out one way systems, signs that you can use to indicate social distancing. Uh, there are big round signs that you can place on the floor that show people where to stand whilst they're queuing. Um, and of course, there are some A4 signs just to remind people to wear their face covering and to use hand sanitizer. Um, and then away from COVID, the GLA do provide a large totem pole. Uh, you might be able to see it here behind me. Uh, it's a big triangular uh, sign that just advises people how to use the ballot papers. Um, and these will be delivered into the polling stations because they're too large for the presiding officers to bring them along. So the polling station layout, um, what we'd ask is that you help your presiding officer to create a route through the station for electors uh, that takes into account the entrance and exits that are available to you. Ideally, you want a one way system. Um, some venues will uh, allow this more easily than others, but uh, you'll have to see what you think works on the day to make it uh, as sensible as possible um, and be flexible because, of course, you might find that naturally the people that are coming into the station go off in a direction you weren't in expecting from from one area to another. And if you think the one way system can be tweaked later in the day to make it a bit more effective, then 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 do so. Um, queuing, as I mentioned earlier, because of the limits that we're having uh, of people in the polling station, it's quite likely that there will be queuing throughout the day. Um, this shouldn't be seen as any kind of failure. It doesn't mean that the polling station isn't operating quickly enough. Uh, it's a complicated election anyway, um, and implementing this election during a pandemic means that we have to limit the number of people inside. So it is quite likely uh, that there will be queues at many, if not all, of our polling stations. Um, and ideally, you want a long way in to the polling station and a short way out. So if you're lucky enough to have a separate entrance and exit, use the route that takes longest to get to the polling station as your way in. And that way you've built in some space uh, for people to queue. Um, if you use the short way in, um, then what will happen is people will start queuing straight out into the street and possibly into places where it's not so safe if they're close to very busy roads and that kind of thing. Um, but of course, overall, the aim here is to have as much social distancing as is possible at your venue. Um, in terms of the where you put the register and the CNL, so those tables that the poll clerks are working at, um, you probably want these close to the entrance to the polling station, have your perspex screens in place. Then what you want is the polling booths to be further away. And after that, you want the ballot box, which usually we would put by the poll clerk table, actually to be on the way out if possible. So again, have a look what works in your uh, your venue. We've got a video coming up in a moment that will hopefully give you an idea of what might be possible. Um, but as I said uh, numerous times now, social distancing is the key. Um, there are some slight things that you can you can also do. Um, it might be that people that have arrived in twos or three together that clearly live together uh, can be allowed in at the same time if they're effectively a bubble at home. Um, they won't necessarily need to socially distance from each other, uh, but you will need to be mindful of the number of people that are already in the polling station. Uh, because if you allow two or three people to come through together without distancing from each other, it still counts towards the limit of uh, the number of people you can have in the venue. Um, we've mentioned the queues already, um, but it will be important to try and keep people happy. If they are having to wait to get into the polling station, it will be sensible for somebody to work that queue, speak to those people, uh, make sure they're clear about what to expect when they go into the station, and of course, to check that they've actually come to the right polling station. Uh, there'll be nothing worse than somebody having to queue up only to find out they've gone to the wrong venue when they get in. Um, if someone's there and all they're actually doing is bringing back a postal vote pack, uh, what we can do is take that from them, take it into the polling station, and then it will go into a big pouch that we're keeping in the polling station to collect postal votes throughout the day. Um, all of the polling stations have been given extra poll clerks, so we've made sure there are more staff for all of our stations than is usual. 
And of course, this additional support is there to greet the electors, to look after the distancing, to manage the number of people that are inside the venue, remind people about their face masks, sanitising their hands, etc. And just to check that they're at the correct polling station when they get there. Um, what we've asked all of the presiding officers to do is to have a bit of a rotor on the day so that poll clerks get to take uh, a, a go at all of the different positions in the polling station throughout the day. Um, it is a very long day in a polling station, uh, so a bit of variety I'm sure will be very welcome. And we've also said to the presiding officers that we would like them to try and make sure that there are regular short breaks for people, not just when they need to get something to eat, but also be because you'll be wearing a mask for extended periods and everybody's going to feel better if they get to go outside and remove that mask briefly for a while. Um, what we might find, of course, is that some people are particularly good at certain roles or particularly enjoy certain roles. Um, so the presiding officers will have a look at when they expect their busiest periods to, to be during the day and probably try and arrange that people are working in those areas where they think they, they, they're particularly efficient or people enjoy working uh, when those busiest periods of the day are, are happening. Um, so here's the, a video which um, I'm going to play now, which hopefully will um, allow you to, to see uh, the kind of thing that we're expecting on the day. Um, hopefully it will play correctly. Um, if the volume doesn't come out, don't worry too much. We, we will be sending this out to you later. Uh, we'll send a link to this video so that you can you can review it um, and, and see it with, with sound if it doesn't come through. Uh, but hopefully you'll be able to watch it. It's only about two minutes long. London's elections will be a little different this time because of COVID-19. We must do everything we can to keep our staff and voters as safe as possible. So please follow all the guidance about coronavirus that you see in this video. This video covers the main differences in polling stations because of coronavirus. There'll be more signage throughout the polling station to assist voters. Most polling stations will have safety marshals to greet voters, remind them that they must wear a face covering unless exempt and direct them to the relevant polling staff. Voters should sanitise their hands on the way into the venue. If there are already voters in the polling station, the voter will be directed to wait until they can come forward to vote. The polling clerk will tell the safety marshal when that can happen, only once a voter has moved away from the desk and into the booth. Presiding officers and polling clerks will be seated behind screens and you'll be socially distanced from each other. You do not have to wear a face covering when seated at your desk, but you should do so when moving around the polling station. You should also follow any one-way systems that are in place. You should sanitise your hands regularly throughout the day and you'll be provided with hand sanitizer. The voting procedure is the same as for other elections. Voters do not need to bring their poll card to vote, but if they do bring it, you should not take it from them. The voter should tell the polling clerk their name and address. You should find them on the register, remembering that corrections are usually at the back of the register, and mark the register as instructed in training. The voter will then be issued with ballot papers. The voter should use their own pen or pencil or take a new pencil from the container and go to the booth. They should then mark their papers and place the unfolded papers in the ballot box. Where possible, voters will leave by a separate door and hand sanitizer will be available for them at the exit. Signage will be in place to assist with this. Booths and touch points will be cleaned throughout the day. You'll be provided with cleaning spray and wipes to sanitise the materials for assisting visually impaired voters if required. Voters can hand in postal votes to a polling station on the day, however they will be asked to give them to staff. Staff will ensure that the postal votes are securely stored for counting. If you have any questions about any of these procedures during the day, please contact your local borough elections office. OK, so hopefully uh, you found that video useful. Uh, there was one piece of advice in there which is actually incorrect. It was filmed a while ago by the GLA um, and it did say that you don't need to wear a face mask when you're seated behind a screen. Uh, the regulations now do mean that you should be wearing a face mask when you're behind a screen, although it is acceptable to remove it 
uh, for a brief period of time just to give yourself a little bit of comfort and some additional uh, fresh air. Uh, but speak to your presiding officer uh, and we'll, I'm sure we'll handle that sensibly on the day. Um, other differences with these elections, of course, it is the GLA elections. So all of our electors will be getting three ballot papers each. Uh, they get one ballot paper to vote for the London mayor. They get one ballot paper to vote for the, Lund the constituency assembly member for Barnet and Camden. And they'll get another paper to vote for London wide assembly members. Um, two of the ballot papers have double columns. The London mayor, there have been so many candidates, there are 20 of them that they've had to go to two columns on the ballot paper. And I'll cover that in a bit more detail in a moment. Similarly, the London wide ballot papers have two columns and the constituency member uh, is a single column ballot paper. Uh, the other difference, of course, is that these ballot papers do not get folded. We ask electors to put them into the ballot box uh, via the chute that you can see in the small picture there, um, face down so that they fall flat. And the reason for that is, of course, because we have an electronic count for these ballot uh, for these elections. Because of all the ballot papers and the different voting methods, uh, they are counted electronically using scanners. So we don't want the ballot papers to be folded in advance. Of course, in Barnet, we also have two by-elections taking place. We have a, a council of vacancy in East Barnet and a council of vacancy in Edgware Ward. Um, so if your polling station is in either of these two wards within Barnet, you will in fact have a further ballot box and you will have an extra ballot paper to give to all of your electors. <clears throat> so just to go over these ballot papers for the GLA again, the yellow one will be for the constituency member and our constituency is Barnet in Camden. It's a single cross against the uh, candidate of their choice. The London wide assembly member is an orange ballot paper. This one is two columns um, and there aren't individuals named on here. There, there are two lists of political parties. And again, they get to choose just one um, and that's then decided on proportional representation from the party lists of candidates that are provided by those political parties. Uh, we've now got a quick video. This one doesn't have any sound. It's very, very short, but it quickly runs through the uh, mayoral ballot paper, which is probably the most critical ballot paper for these elections. OK, so uh, that short silent video just quickly gave some information about the Mayor of London ballot paper, the pink ballot paper. Uh, it's shown in white here, but what this does show you clearly is the information that's given to the elector at the top of that ballot paper. It says vote once in column A for your first choice. But what you can see, of course, is that there are effectively two column A's because there are two lists of candidates. So they get to choose just one of those candidates um, from either side of the ballot paper. And then it says vote once in column B for your second choice. And you can see the column B alongside column A and again on both sides of the ballot paper. Uh, an elector must mark a first choice, otherwise the ballot paper isn't counted at all. Um, if they put two first choices, it will be rejected. Um, and if they put two second choices, uh, it simply won't count because we won't know who they wanted as their first choice. Some other things to look at on the countdown to polling day. We do ask everybody, please visit your polling place if you know where that is. Make sure you know how you're going to get there on the day. Make sure you know the way into the venue and so on. Um, if you haven't heard from your PO uh, by next week on Saturday, Saturday the 1st of May, please contact them. And if you can't get hold of them, please contact us in the elections office so that we can just make sure you do make contact with your presiding officer before the day. Um, on the day, make sure you get there for 6 a.m. Um, there is a lot of extra signage to put up. There's a PPE to sort out um, and you will need to work with your presiding officer to devise the best system that you can put into your polling station to allow a one way system wherever possible. 
Uh, just a quick reminder that your clothing should be politically neutral. You don't want to look like you're supporting a particular political party or candidate. Um, but if you're bringing your own face mask, don't get too worried about the, the colour of your face mask. Um, the light blue um, kind of health service style face masks are perfectly acceptable to wear. They're quite normal, um, so you shouldn't worry the fact that they're blue. Um, so long as your face mask doesn't have a primary colour of one of the major parties um, and doesn't have any logos which um, support uh, any candidates or parties, they, sh they should be acceptable. Do remember, of course, it is early May when the elections take place, but we can't be sure what the weather is going to be like. And we will be trying to keep as many doors and windows open as possible So bring along some extra layers so that you can put those on if you start to get cold. Make sure you've got enough food and drink for the whole day. Um, you can bring a hot drink along it uh, in a flask, but please be careful of the ballot papers. We don't want any spillages happening. And unfortunately, you can't bring along any kettles or microwaves. Unfortunately, uh, they're not pack tested if you use them at home, uh, so we can't plug them into uh, our venues, uh, uh, electric systems and so on. Uh, polling stations open at seven, of course, and they close at 10 p.m. at night. Uh, we've asked everybody to arrive at 6 a.m. So there's plenty of time uh, to do all of the setting up. We're asking you to call uh, this number 020-8359-5563 if your presiding officer hasn't turned up by 6.30 a.m. Uh, don't leave it any later than that. If you haven't seen them by 6.30 a.m., give us a call because we'll have to get somebody down there with another ballot box and some spare ballot papers to make sure that your polling station will open at 7 a.m. Um, the elections team will be calling out to all presiding officers. We'll be making sure that we make contact with all of the presiding officers by quarter to seven, just because we need to be sure that everybody's there and that all stations will open at 7 a.m. Of course, COVID security is the big priority for these elections, but of course there are other important things for all elections. Make sure the stationery is set up, uh, you know where all your ballot papers are, they're in the right order so they're given out correctly to electors. Um, the register and the CNL need to be used correctly. You need to make sure there are pencils available if electors don't bring their own. Um, and tendered ballot papers should be kept in their packet um, and unless they need to be used and the presiding officer needs to call us in the office before they start issuing any tendered ballot papers. The ballot box, of course, always needs to be kept secure. It needs to be um, looked after throughout the entire day. Um, seals need to be put on at 7 a.m. once everybody's checked and can confirm that it is indeed empty um, and no other seals can be placed on there. Sometimes agents or candidates might want to add a seal, but they're not allowed to do that. Uh, at the beginning of, of polling. Um, you'll have already been trained on the register, of course. Here's a copy of one from uh, Barnet. Uh, you'll see that the elector number runs down the left hand column. Um, the name of the elector runs down the centre. And what we ask is that you mark between the elector roll number and their name. Um, in most of our polling stations, I think we use a ruler to make sure they're nice, neat, clear marks so that there's no confusion with wobbly lines uh, that might go to one or two different electors' names. <clears throat> uh, the corresponding number list is a bit different for this election. Because there are three ballot papers uh, for the GLA elections, the CNL has to have three columns, and you'll see that the numbers on the CNL correspond so that those ballot papers, although they're different colours, will all have the same number. And then the job of the poll clerk, of course, is just to put the electors' number alongside the letters that appear in the appropriate column for those ballot paper numbers. As was mentioned in the video, postal voters may bring their postal voting pack into any polling station within the borough. Um, we simply take these po postal vote packs from them, place them into the large pouch that you have uh, at the polling station, and these uh, will be brought back to us at the end of the day along with the ballot box. Um, so they just get put away if somebody does turn up with lots of postal votes, we've asked the presiding officers just to make a note of that in their polling station logbook. As we've said already, uh, it is likely that there are queues throughout the day uh, and we have given all polling stations extra staff to try and manage this. Um, but if there is a queue still just coming up to 10 p.m., it will be important at that point to make sure that people are waiting at the correct polling station. 
we, um, because if they get into the wrong polling station, uh, they won't have time to go to their own if they've come to the wrong place. And if there's a queue at 10 p.m., then a member of the team will need to go and stand at the end of that queue so that you know exactly who the last person in the queue at 10 p.m. was. Um, ballot papers can continue to be issued to everybody that was queuing at 10 p.m., but anybody that wasn't in the queue at 10 p.m. is not legally entitled to a ballot paper. Once the last voter has been, um, the presiding officer will then seal the ballot box. They've got a orange seal for this, um, which goes over the area where the chute on the polling station is. The chute gets removed, a little flap gets closed and the orange seal uh, gets put onto the ballot box then. And if there is a candidate or an agent at your polling station, by law, they are allowed to put their own seal onto the ballot box at that point. Um, this is very rare. I don't think we've ever seen this occur in Barnet, but it does happen in other parts of the country. Of course, once polling is finished, there is a job, unfortunately, of having to quickly clear up the polling station to make sure everything gets put away. The presiding officers have to make their way back to us. There's some paperwork they need to complete. Um, so please allow them to get on with that. We ask poll clerks to try and clear up the station and put away the polling booths, etc., so that the presiding officer can finish their paperwork. Um, they do need to bring the rubbish sacks back to us. Um, and ideally, if you can, we'd like the polling booths to have one last wipe down before they get folded up and put to one side. Um, try and remove all of the posters and the floor signs that you've used throughout the day and leave the polling venues as tidy as possible, please. Um, we will be using the majority of these venues again next year when we have our council elections. Um, and the presiding officers, as I say, they will need to concentrate on their paperwork because they have numerous wallets and packages that have to be uh, set out correctly for when they bring them back to us. Um, so that's the end of the briefing session. I hope you haven't found it too long. Um, look forward to seeing you in our polling stations on the day. Uh, make sure you've completed the GLA training that is required of you. And of course, if you have any questions, please do contact us. The email is on the screen there. It's elections project office, all one word, at barnet.gov.uk. Uh, and we'll do our very best to help you. Thank you very much and see you soon.